Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. What a joy it is to have you with us. And thank you for watching our broadcast. And those of you that have been letting us know that you've been faithful viewers, that is so important to us. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We appreciate the fact that you watch the broadcast regularly, and we appreciate the fact that you're praying for it and even sowing into it. Thank you once again. We appreciate it so very much. Those of you that have been tuning in for the last couple of weeks, you know that we've been talking about calling in your harvest. Let me ask you a question. Are you a sower? Do you sow seed? Are you someone who supports ministries? You support the work of the Lord? Are you someone who sows into other people, being a blessing to them? If you're a sower, then you have every right to expect a harvest. That is not something Jerry Savell came up with. It's not something Oral Roberts or Kenneth Copeland or any other preacher came up with. It is something God came up with. You have a right to expect a harvest from the seeds that you sow. So we're going to be talking about today, and we'll continue on next week, once again, calling in your harvest. It's time for the body of Christ to begin to experience harvest like the Bible says we can have. You know, the Bible says we can have as much as 30-fold, 60-fold, and even 100-fold. Brother Jerry, you mean you but really believe that we can have a hundredfold? Yes, I do. In fact, I've experienced a hundredfold harvest many, many times. In fact, when Carol and I first started out and we were believing God for everything, a tenfold harvest on our seed wouldn't get us very far. We needed a hundredfold just to break even. And so we learned to believe for a hundredfold way back there a long, long time ago. So yes, I believe you can experience 30-fold, 60-fold, a hundredfold. Well, if we can have a hundredfold, why not go for the top level? Praise God. Now, let's look at something that Jesus taught us from the fourth chapter of Mark, beginning in verse 26. He said, so is the kingdom of God. Or in other words, I'm about to show you how the kingdom of God operates. He said, it's like a man should cast seed into the ground and should sleep and rise night and day and the seed should spring and grow up, he knoweth not how. Now, what that simply means is this. Once that man sows his seed into the soil, and then he goes to bed that night, he doesn't know what's happening underneath that soil. Oh, he knows from his knowledge as a farmer, but he can't see what's happening. He expects that seed to do what it was designed to do, and that is to germinate and to grow. He expects the soil to do what it's designed to do, but he can't see that happening. Once he's covered that seed up, he can't see what that seed is doing. He just has to trust the seed. He has to trust the soil. And so notice here, it says he sleeps night and day and the seed should spring and grow up, but he knoweth not how. For the seed bringeth forth fruit of itself, first the blade, then the ear, after that, the full corn in the ear. I call that the law of progression. It's first, uh, he says, first the blade, then the ear. After that, the full corn in the ear. So it is a progressive thing. And then he says, but when the fruit is brought forth, immediately he putteth in the sickle because the harvest is come. So notice, once this seed has done what it's designed to do, what does it do? It springs up, first the blade, then the ear, then the full corn in the ear. It goes through that law of progression. And then once it gets into that stage of maturity or full corn in the ear, then he says the farmer takes his sickle because harvest time is come. Now, a sickle is an instrument for cutting crops during harvest time. Sometimes it's even referred to as a reaping hook. Now, this was something that was used in Jesus' day, and it was something that the disciples could relate to. Jesus was giving them an object lesson, you might say. He said that once the seed has done what it's designed to do, and that is first the blade, then the ear, then the full corn in the ear, then the next thing that happens is the farmer takes the sickle or the, uh, the, the uh, reaping hook, a sharp instrument, 
and he begins to cut it off and reaps the harvest. So Jesus used this as an object lesson. The point is, harvesting requires a sharp instrument, regardless of whether it's a, 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 a sickle, like used in Jesus' day, or whether it's a big John Deere combine like we'd use in our day. It still requires a sharp instrument to harvest that crop. Now, with that in mind, what do you think our sickle is? When we sow seed, when we sow financial seeds, what is our sickle? How do we harvest from the seeds that we've sown? I want to submit to you that our sickle is the Word of God coming out of our mouth. The reason I suggest that is Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12 makes this statement. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than a two-edged sword. So notice the word of God is described as a sharp instrument, just like a sickle is a sharp instrument. During Jesus' day, in order for that farmer to harvest his crop, he had to do so with a sharp instrument that was called a sickle. In order for you and I to reap our financial harvest, we do so with a sharp instrument, and that sharp instrument is the Word of God coming out of our mouth. Isaiah chapter 49 and verse 2, Isaiah made this statement, and he hath made my mouth like a sharp sword. So notice Isaiah said, God has made my mouth like a sharp sword. When Isaiah was speaking God's Word, It was like a sharp instrument. The book of Revelation, speaking of Jesus, says in Revelation 19, 15, out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword. So once again, the word of God is a sharp instrument. It's like a sickle, and it's how we reap our harvest. We begin by speaking God's word over our harvest. Now, once again, the Bible tells us in Psalm 103, Verses 20 and 21. Listen to this. Bless the Lord, ye his angels, that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. Notice the Bible tells us that the angels hearken to the voice of God's word. When you and I are speaking God's word, then the angels stand at attention and they hearken to God's word and then they go to work fulfilling it. It goes on to say in verse 21, bless ye the Lord, all ye his hosts, that's his angels, ye ministers of his, that's his angels, that do his pleasure. So the Bible's telling us that when we speak God's word, heaven's angels stand at attention. They hearken to the words coming out of our mouth. You might say they're harvesting angels. They're angels that have been sent to assist us. Hebrews chapter 1, verse 14 says, Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be the heirs of salvation? Are you one of the heirs of salvation? Well, if so, then the angels are all ministering spirits and they've been sent forth to minister for those who are heirs of salvation. So what's, what am I leading to? What is all this about? You and I, have the ability to harvest a crop of finances after we have sown our financial seeds, and it begins by speaking God's Word out of our mouth. That's our sickle. As we speak God's Word out of our mouth, it is like a sharp instrument, and it's designed by God to do for us what the sickle did for the farmer in Jesus' day, help them reap their crops. And then it also tells us that the angels have been sent by God as ministering spirits sent to assist us and help us by hearkening to the word of God that comes out of our mouth. So I like to say it like this. When I sow financial seed, then the next thing I start doing is speaking the word of God over that seed. I begin to say what God's word says about it. And I know at the same time that as I'm speaking God's word, I have the attention of the angels and the angels hearken to God's word and they will assist me in collecting my harvest. Now you say, well, how does that happen? Well, you have to go to James chapter five. Once again, we talked about this verse 
uh, part of it anyway on last week's broadcast, but let's look at James chapter five and beginning in verse one. It says, go to now ye rich men, weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. Your riches are corrupted and your garments are moth eaten. Your gold and your silver is cankered and the rust of them shall be a witness against you and shall eat your flesh as it were fire. You have reaped treasure together for the last days. Behold the hire of the laborers, or you could say the harvest. Behold the hire of the laborers who have reaped down your fields, which is of you kept back by fraud, crieth. And the cries of them which have reaped are entered into the ears of the Lord of Saboeth. Let me explain that. What he's saying is this, the harvest that belonged to these people called the harvesters was being held back. It was being held back by fraud, the Bible says. It rightfully belonged to them, but they were not receiving it. And so it's the same with our harvest. The harvest that belongs to us from every seed we have sown, most of the time is being held back by our adversary, the devil. He's holding it back, keeping us from receiving it. That's why we need the angels to assist us. Notice it says that the harvest or the hire of these laborers crieth. And then it goes on to say, and the cries of them which have reaped are entered into the ears of the Lord of Saboeth. Notice that is not Sabbath, but Saboeth. And Saboeth means the Lord of hosts, the Lord of armies, the Lord of angels. What is this saying? There are two cries that are taking place here. The first cry is from the harvest. That harvest is crying out for its rightful owner. And the second cry is the people that it rightfully belongs to, they're crying out. So notice two cries, and both cries enter into the ears of the Lord of Saboeth, the Lord of angels, the Lord of armies, the Lord of hosts. What is that telling us? Our harvest is crying out for us, but are you crying out for your harvest? Let me say it again. Your harvest, if you have sown seed, financial seed, then you're entitled to a harvest. And if you're not experiencing that harvest, if it seems like that harvest is being held back, well, I can tell you who's holding it back, not God. It's your adversary, the devil, and you need some assistance. That's why God has given you the angels. They are to assist you in collecting your harvest. However, what you need to do is cry out for that harvest. It's crying out for you, but are you crying out for it? What do you mean crying out for my harvest? Well, to cry here in this verse does not mean to express sorrow, but it means to proclaim with vehemence. In other words, vehemence implies with great force and with great passion. It's like saying, Satan, in the name of Jesus, I want my harvest. Release my harvest. That's the cry that James chapter 5 is talking about. The word cry also means to demand immediate action. Praise God, I like that. See, if you're not crying for your harvest, then it's not likely you're going to experience it. If you sow financial seed, and then that's the end of it, you don't do anything else, then it's not likely you're going to see that harvest, even though the Bible says you're entitled to a harvest. Now, the moment you sow your financial seed, the harvest that that seed will produce begins crying out for you. Why? Because you're its rightful owner. Hallelujah. Just think about it. Your harvest is crying out for you. You know, you may not can hear it with these physical ears, but it's crying out. In fact, many times when I'm believing God uh, for, uh, you know, material things like uh, an airplane for the ministry or, or buildings for the ministry, Sometimes I'll just walk around and put my hand over my ear and I'll ask my wife or maybe another staff member, do you hear that? Do you hear that? That's my harvest crying out for me. That's my airplane crying for me. That's my building crying for me. That's our finances crying out for us. They, they belong to us and they want to be in our hands and not in Satan's hands. So what do we do? See, there's two cries mentioned here, the cry of the harvest and the cry of the harvester. So you need to cry. Now, I'm not talking about, once again, with tears. I'm not talking about with sorrow. We're talking about 
demand immediate action. We're talking about with force and with passion. Get up every day saying, in the name of Jesus, I have sown my seed and I'm entitled to a harvest. Satan, you release my harvest in Jesus' name. I'm crying out for my harvest and I believe my cry is entering into the ear of the Lord of Sabaoth, the Lord of hosts, the Lord of angels, the Lord of armies. And God, your word says in Psalm 103, that the angels hearken unto the voice of your word. I'm speaking your word. So angels, I believe you will assist me in gathering up my harvest in the name of Jesus. What am I doing? I'm doing what James chapter five tells me to do. My harvest is crying out for me and now I'm crying out for it. And the Bible says those cries enter into the ears of the Lord of Sabaoth. In other words, he hears the harvest crying. When he hears us crying, then praise God, he will cause his angels to help us and assist us in gathering up what rightfully belongs to us. You know, Jesus said in the 18th chapter of Matthew, whatever you bind on earth, will be, uh, we'll be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. It's time for you to bind the devil and all his spirits that are holding back your harvest. Bind them. That means to render them helpless, render them inoperative. I do that. I say in the name of Jesus, Satan, I bind you. I bind your evil spirits and I command you to take your hands off my harvest. Well, I'm also entitled to loose. Whatever I loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. And so I say, ministering angels, ministering spirits, I loose you in the name of Jesus to help me collect my harvest to assist me in gathering up my harvest. And praise God, when I say amen to that prayer, I walk away with a smile on my face because I know my harvest is crying out for me. I'm crying out for it. And I believe it's just a matter of time and harvest will manifest. That's how you aggressively call in your harvest. I want to encourage you to begin to do so. Don't give up on your harvest. The Bible says in Psalm 20 that God never forgets a seed sown. It says he remembers your offerings. He never forgets a seed sown. You know, I've had times when a harvest came in and I said, Lord, what is this all about? And he said, this was uh, the harvest from the seed that you sowed in that missionary 20 years ago. You forgot about it, but I never forgot about it. Praise God. Amen. I remember years ago, uh, Brother Jesse DePlantis and I sowed seed into a little woman who had come to hear us preach. Her car broke down. We had it repaired for her. Uh, We put her up and her family in a hotel so they could be in the meetings and not have to uh, be uh, concerned about the expense. We paid all of their expenses, got the car repaired, filled it up with gasoline, gave them money to get back home on And we just did it out of the goodness of our heart. I really wasn't expecting a harvest. Brother Jesse wasn't really expecting a harvest. But several days later, a few weeks later, I received a harvest. I received a blessing that that caught me off guard. I mean, it was a surprise. I said, Lord, what is this all about? He said, that's your harvest from the seed that you sowed into that little woman. I said, Lord, I didn't even ask you for a harvest. He said, I know, but I never forget a seed sown. I called Brother Jesse. I said, Brother Jesse, uh, has there anything out of the ordinary happened to you in the last few days? He said, yes, I received a major uh, blessing. And he said, I asked the Lord about it. And he said, it was from the seed that you and I sowed in that little woman. I said, Jesse, God never forgets a seed sown. So if you've sown seed, then your harvest is crying out for you. Did you hear what I said? If you've sown seed, then your harvest is crying out for you. It's time for you to begin to cry out for it. You begin to speak God's word. You put a demand on Satan and all of his cohorts and command them to release your harvest. Let your harvest go and believe for the ministering spirits to assist you in collecting that harvest. I'm telling you folks, this is the word of God. It works. Hallelujah. And I want you to notice before we go to our announcement that in this same chapter, way up there in uh, verse three, notice God said for these people that are, 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 in fact, they're wealthy people 
and they're using their wealth in a wrong way. They're not using it for the kingdom of God. They're not blessing humanity. They're, they're, they're even getting rich by defrauding others and, and taking advantage of others. And he said, notice, and that, that you have reaped for the last days. You have actually said you have heaped treasure together for the last days. That's twofold in its application. Number one, this is going to end. You're not going to be able to keep the money that rightfully belongs to God's people. And number two, you have reaped all this up for the last days. In other words, in the last days, there's going to be a major wealth transfer. And the Bible says in the book of Proverbs, the wealth of the sinner has been laid up for the just. I'm telling you folks, if you are right with God, you have, uh, you, 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 you've made Jesus the Lord of your life, you have right standing with him, then you qualify as one of those in whom the wealth of the sinner has been laid up for. I believe that's part of that harvest for the last days. I believe we're in the last days. Just look around you. The signs around us are indicating that we are definitely in the last days. And that means some major harvest is going to break loose for the body of Christ and a major wealth transfer is going to take place in the body of Christ. And I believe you and I are the ones that are going to experience. So let me encourage you today. If you're a sower of financial seed, don't give up on your harvest. It's crying out for you. Begin to cry out for it. And you will see that God will honor his word. Praise God. I trust you've been blessed today. Let me pray for you right now and pray over your harvest. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every person that's watching this broadcast, every seed sower. I pray over every person that's sown into this ministry. And I believe in the name of Jesus, because your word is final authority, that they are entitled to a major harvest, a major financial harvest. And in the name of Jesus, Satan, you let it go. We break your power and we loose the ministering spirits to help gather up our harvest, that it'll come into our hands and we can use it to, to further the kingdom of God and use it to bless humanity. In Jesus' name, amen. Lift your hands and begin to thank God for your harvest right now in the name of Jesus. Praise God. Thank you for watching the broadcast today. We've got a special announcement about some resources we're going to make available for you. But listen, I want to remind you, get connected with our social media, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. It's all there to help you. It's a way that we can minister to you on a consistent basis. Take advantage of that, all right? Now, watch this announcement about our special resource that we want to make available to you this week, and then I'll be right back with some closing remarks. There's a time to sow and a time to reap. Now is the time for your harvest. Harvest time has come. What's keeping you from claiming your rightful harvest? In the powerful three CD teaching, Calling in Your Harvest, Jerry Savelle explains the spiritual laws that govern the reaping of a harvest that's reserved just for you. In this series, he addresses, are you entitled to the harvest? Your part in the manifestation of your harvest. How the seeds you sow determine your destiny. How to know when your harvest is ready. What might be holding back your harvest? Can you ensure there's no end to your harvest? The most important thing to do with your harvest and more. God never forgets your offerings and the seeds you sow. Request this powerful series, Calling in Your Harvest, today. Call or go online to jerrysavelle.org. Don't wait. It's time to expect extraordinary things to happen. Your harvest is ready to go to its rightful owner. I can't stress enough how important these CDs are. Calling in your harvest. You're going to learn what, I, what we've covered over the last three weeks and then even more. I want to encourage you to place your order for these right away. Don't delay. Order them today. Here's some of the things you're going to learn. Are you entitled to a harvest? What is your part in the manifestation of your harvest? How will the seed you sow determine your own destiny? When is the right time and what are the indicators that tell you your harvest is ready? What might be holding back your harvest? Can you, uh, can you ensure there is no end to your harvest? 
What are the tools that are freely given to you for helping to collect your harvest? And what is the most important thing you should do with the harvest after you reap it? Praise God. Some powerful, powerful truths that you're going to learn from three, these three CDs on calling in your harvest. You can order them by going to our website or you can call the number that's on the screen or you can write to the address that's on the screen, okay? But do it today. Don't say, well, you know, next week I'm going to order those. No, do it today while it's fresh on your mind because I'm telling you, once you get them, you're not going to be able to put them down. Calling in your harvest. That's our product today. The last time we'll be offering this will be on next week's broadcast, but don't wait till then. Order it today. Thank you, partners, once again for believing in our vision, believing in the outreach of this ministry. You know, we don't talk a whole lot about it, but we have offices in several other nations. We have Bible schools. We have churches. We train nationals. Uh, I'm telling you, we are involved in feeding the hungry, a lot of humanitarian work. There are things that this ministry is doing all over the world, and our partners are the ones who help us get it done. Thank you, partners. Without you, it certainly would not be uh, feasible or even possible for us to get this done. So thank you, partners. Your partnership with us means the world to us. I also want to encourage those of you that haven't become a partner yet. You know, I have people say, I watch your broadcast all the time, but uh, I've never sent an offering to you. Well, change that, praise God. We could use that offering to help us expand this ministry. And if this ministry has been helping you, Galatians chapter 6 says, that you should sow into those that are teaching you. So why don't you consider doing that? Sow a seed, either a one-time seed, or become a partner with us. If you'd like more information on how to become a partner, go on the website and you can check it out and learn how to become a partner. And I'm telling you, you'll be blessed by it. It's not a one-way street where you're doing all the giving, we're doing all the receiving. I'm telling you, there are things that will take place in your life as a result of this partnership that you're going to like, praise God. Well, once again, next week, we're going to continue this study on calling in your harvest, and I want to encourage you to make your plans to be with us. Tell a friend about the broadcast. You know, uh, it's, it's exciting to know that more and more people are watching each and every week, and it's also exciting when you communicate with us and let us know about it. Thank you once again for watching today. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your support. And we want you to know we're believing, God, that this is indeed your year for a great breaking loose in Jesus' name. I'll see you next week. And until then, remember, your faith will overcome the world. Next week, Brother Savell continues his message. The key to operating in God's laws and to avoid frustration and the temptation to quit is to understand that with God, there is an appointed time there is a due season for everything.